Hello. Welcome. Good day. Kind of a dark, gloomy day today, out by me. Starting off, as usual, lately, at least, with uh, Tamriel, Tamriel Rebuild soundtrack. Lovely TR music. Go buy it. Uh, and the traditional soundtrack, though, I think at this point, I kind of know what I'm doing. At least enough to reliably produce noise. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you, Smalio. Much appreciated, as always. Uh, yeah, so I started today, kind of didn't have a lot of time yesterday to resume finishing this one up here, Area Effect Arrows. There was some CFG generator hack I was deep diving into, and uh, I didn't actually get it resolved. Figured there were other things we could shift to to kind of cleanse my mind from that craziness. Uh... And then maybe revisit it later. Um, firstly, a couple of people have reported something to do with uh, concept art plantations, BCUM ground cover. It's all messed up. It's what I put in my note, but apparently we have a busted link uh, and, and probably other things wrong with it. So I guess I'll start off taking a look at that. Okay. So, yeah. First off, wrong link. Whoops. Concept Arts Plantation. So, should be an easy fixer. Good old typo. Should be it. Let's just review what we got here. And maybe I can... Uh, got a couple of emails here. Let's just take a peek at what some people were saying about this one. Uh, not going to put it on screen just because some of these explicitly state they don't want their communications public which is an option on the form if you never used it uh, so let's just see here yeah I think this is just the major issue is that we are linking to the wrong mod even though we say right here you know comes from there so I think it's worth um I think it's worth a change log entry, probably. We'll go ahead and put a date updated here to call attention to the fact that it was changed. It's been enough time, I think. All right, almost a month. Three. Hey, Section 8. Good morning. I wish I was fishing. No offense. After the stream. Uh, glad you're here, my friend. And yeah, hopefully we'll be fishing in OpenMW Lua sometime soon. Although, thanks to your explorations, I feel a little bit more confident to give MWSE Lua a try on my local Linux and Wine setup. So yeah, um, we will hopefully be fishing soon. Hopefully in multiplayer. Am I right? Yeah, at, uh, section eight. Yeah, after learning this API, I want to go fishing too. <laughs> it's um, it's cool, but yeah, you gotta you know, in particular coming from like a TES three MP Lua, 
or the little bits I've seen of MWSC Lua, you know, there's um, different patterns at play for sure. Uh, yeah, just fixing up stuff on the website right now, though. Um, but yeah, very interested to see some fishing action happening in Lua or some airship action, too. I saw Zach has a cat. You graciously linked to that action. That was crazy. I didn't actually end up trying that. Uh, maybe I'll pull that up here on the stream and show you people. But Zach has a cat. Lua Maestro uh, apparently had some airship thing. Dwemer airship. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can give it a try in a minute here. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Change log. Uh, let's see. These three. Excuse me. I think that's okay. Uh, let's take a look. And then, yeah, in the meantime, let's try to... Here we go. So this is the code in particular. Let's, uh, you know, let's play it. Let's download it and play it. Um, yeah, I'll just put this in, uh, cause this looks like a kind of a skunk works repo with a bunch of things. So I'm just going to put it in the root here. How awkward, by the way, section eight, how awkward would it be <clears throat> fishing mod B without like scene graph stuff? Probably pretty awkward, right? To reflect some of those changes. Quite a bit of goodies here. Wow. Mundus. My man, a controller override. Interesting. Wow. Gonna take a walk down Lewis Street, by the way. Quick thief tools. Meta.ini. Interesting. With some kind of like mod manager file. Uh, hmm. Airship. That's what we want. Dingus. I'm curious. <laughs> All right. Anyway, enough screwing around. Hmm. I'm just getting more curious about all this stuff. Superman. All right. Let's just pick something and take a peek. Script super bad. <laughs> okay, so this is clearly not a current one. Scripts wow. Doesn't exist anymore. Okay, well, there you go. I'm not curious enough to look into Git history to see what it used to be. It's gone. Cat Mundus. All right. Well, Mundus. Interesting. This is one is a bit more busy. All right. 
moving on. Um, controller override. I'm curious about this. UI player interface. Interesting. Wow. I'm playing a lot on my Steam Deck, so this is relevant to my interests. Controller override. UI player interface. Hmm. Not too big of a file. Huh. If I had a controller connected to my laptop, I would just try this right now. Um, and if I had some way of showing you me using my Steam Deck, I would do that too. But I can't, really. It'd be a little awkward. I'll just be sitting here like this. Someday, though, I'll try setting up my capture card for the Steam Deck, maybe. Hmm, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what this does, but, I mean, you can strongly infer from the, you know, controller override uh, some of these names, you know, Strongly suggests what it does, but uh, let's see. Co-player. Co Controller mode. That would be the public interface right here. Update. In wins inventory windows. Okay. Interesting. So this is a completely different inventory. It looks like. All right. <laughs> Let's try this. Let's just try plugging it in, and I'll do keyboard and mouse, and we'll just look at it, because this is, like, fascinating. Came here for airships, found controller GUI. Gotta love it. All right. That's all we need. Let's just try it. Let's see if it works with 0 0.48. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, yep. Just toss that in there. No problem. Excuse me. A 
Although I will say, there was... I just caught a glimpse of it when I first started the game, but there was... Yeah, this. We have... That's not how you do a comment. <laughs> so I guess it... Maybe still tried to... Do something. I don't know if this is just a bug in it or if I type out something. Let's see. No, I didn't touch anything. Oop. Did just there. Uh, yeah, no touch. No touch. Nothing. It's co global fifty. Hmm. Oh, activation interface. Okay, so right there, need 0 0.49 for the activation interface. And that'd be why that didn't work. Moving on. Totally just hosed all my plans <laughs> to play around with the airship. Which isn't working. Hmm. Hmm. All right. I might have to give up on this. Figuring out Zach's undocumented stuff is a little bit off topic for the stream right now, but it was an interesting look. Uh... Totally interested in controller overrides and stuff like that. Would be pretty cool to have just a controller GUI. It's one of the things that makes it a pain still to play on my Steam Deck, for example. Back on top. Yeah, we're going to take a look at my work on this just now. Wow. This is like some 1999 internet. There we go. That's the right page. These links are good too. Just sanity check. Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. What's not too bad, Section 8? <sighs> oh, uh, you're fishing. He says, I was piddling with my script and was hoping to see some flying action. Yeah, I didn't... I tried to... <laughs> I tried to mess with some controller thing that Zach's got going in there and that just totally blew up because there's like some other dependency that I thought I installed uh, Zach Utils right here um, I thought I installed it but it was no go Let's see. go back here yeah it's definitely there Um, so I assume, though, the airship is going to dip into that, too, but I will, once I'm done checking this out, try the airship properly. I got distracted by the controller stuff. Having a good controller UI would be amazing. Mm, yeah. It did load it. But, you know, maybe this, maybe this made it blow up. Oh, 
jeez. There we go. Okay, still blowing up. Let's get that airship in there. I should load the Dingus plugin because that's what I'm feeling like this morning. Feeling like a big Dingus. Thought I saw another. Yeah, here we go. No? Big same, yeah. Uh, dingus day. Uh, oh, there we go. So wait. Hmm, I'm just gonna load all of these. And then maybe encourage Zach to document these. If he wants. Maybe he doesn't want people messing with him. Two hours to capture an item ID, but I got it eventually. Yeah, welcome to my world. This, so, uh, you know, the reality is right now with OpenMW Lua, if you want to do something, you're going to be one of the first people doing it no matter what you do. You know, <laughs> so uh, ha furiously hacking is a part of that and figuring things out. For sure. All right, I'm going to comment that out. Thank you, Tills. I'm going to put more up. Okay. Hold on to your butts. Hopefully the airship just works. <laughs> A bunch of stuff here. NPC. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. My name, NPC test. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't exist. As uh, Section 8 says, as raw as it is, though, honestly, it's very nice to have it documented at the level it is. It helps so much. Yes, absolutely. Um, there are some concepts that I think uh, that are hard to document, you know, um, pa different patterns. In my experimentations with OpenMW Lua, I've done the completely wrong thing so many times, you know. Um, and it might just be because I'm not, like, officially a programmer. I'm just a dummy trying to do things. But... You know, that's the reality of it. Um, I was, for example, working on the Melchior Dark Dwemer Lightning Rods thing, and I was looking at the MWSE script. Just pull that up right here. And I was trying to do it the same way they do it. Which is, you know, they go through... Uh, when the thing is activated. So basically when the cell uh, loads up. And... Uh, They do some checking to make to decide if they should spawn it, and then eventually, when they decide they do, they they get some information about like the the layout of the thing. <laughs> nope. Oh. <laughs> um. And and yeah, it just I forget where I was even going with this. Um. But I wanted to start off by like just iterating things when the engine starts up. I couldn't get it to work because of various reasons of doing things wrong, but then if you do do it that way, it ends up just being really expensive because if you have a really, for example, modded setup, you know, you're going to have thousands upon thousands of cells. Um, and then uh, again, you know, I've seen people use events where they should use an interface probably, and there's just some non-obvious things that I hope as the corpus of mods gets larger that we'll, we'll see people jumping on board with good patterns. All right, uh, gonna play your interface scripts. Yeah, I mean, there appears to be no Zach Utils folder here at all, actually. So I don't know if we can run the airship. So I'm actually gonna just drop it. <laughs> there we go. Would be cool to see it though. Um, you know, extremely hype, and this, in particular the controller stuff too. Um, after the stream, I will ask Zach about that.
Boom, there we go right there. This release growing a little bit as I drag it out over two weeks. All right. Um, so let's... All right. Right, working on the load order and some way to kind of, I don't know. I wish there was a more automatic way to translate MLOX output to my data. Doing it manually is a pain. Somebody made a comment to me via email that they weren't sure what to pick for simply walking. Let's take a look at what we got. What are we telling people to do here? As I recall, there's quite a few options here. But it's been a minute since I looked at it. Animation, I believe. Yeah, simply walking. Yeah, okay. Quite a few options. Okay, let's take a look at the page. I personally like to go with just the walking one. I think I tried to look for the... to, to see what the Almalexia cast animation was like as well. But honestly, I just, just kind of like the vanilla one. Hmm. W.S. Edition. Well, looks like it's update time. Port Mod New Vegas repo. Simply walking. Not that one. Weapon sheathing. There you go. W.S. Weapon sheathing. That's the one. So let's tell people to go with this one. Hey, Santa. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Just doing our thing here. I hope you're having a great day. Section 8 says, Progress. I figured out why Ultimate Fishing replaces the fishing rod via script. You feel stupid for not remembering that you can't equip the fishing rod by default. Oh, I see. Interesting. Hmm. Well, you know. <laughs> I just never knew that straight up, so don't feel too dumb. I was thinking too, by the way, man, since we're talking about uh, cool MWSC stuff that we could potentially implement in OpenMW, I thought uh, Danae has that... Uh, What's the one with the broom where you can like sweep the cobwebs? That should be doable in OpenMW Lua now that we can disable things. 
via Lua. That would be kind of a cool one to do, though. I forget what it's called. Let's see if we can find that here. <laughs> Says, not saying I've tried a bunch of times. All right. She's got quite a few files here, but let's see. Broom. A mortal could pour it. Yes, what I'm talking about. It's not like super complicated here. Hold up. And it, it's kind of a fun one. It's one I always wanted to try. Like definitely not, you know, as cool as fishing. No offense, but still kind of neat. There are cobwebs everywhere that you can't do jack with, really. You know, this would kind of give you a reason to carry a broom around, I guess. Hmm. I wish Nexus would let you search things that they don't let you search currently. Where is it? Since a broom apparently doesn't turn up anywhere here. Web. Nope. Stop me if you see it, but I don't think. Where is it? There is an MWSE mod somewhere. I'm about to give up looking for it. Let's you take out the, uh, as I said, cobwebs with the broom. And uh, indeed, as Section 8 said, something, you know, that wouldn't, in theory, be too difficult of a port. Anyways, suffice to say, that mod does exist. I just can't think of the name of it at the moment. All right, we want to, we're telling people to do... Let's see here. Weapon sheathing edition. There's, you could you could maybe want pure sedition weapon sheathing. You could maybe want all Malexia cast weapon sheathing. You know, it's reasonable. It's reasonable, I think, to say or any other as you prefer. a few lists using this one. Okay. screen.
cool. That is a good call out. Thank you to the user that commented to me about that. Let's see here. Uh, oh, they don't mind being public. So, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. That's a good call out. Quite a few options there. Oh, my. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. This is a language server fail, to be sure. Holy smokes. This is the second time something like this has happened to me. What the f What is happening here? Holy sh... All right. Where is my file? Why though? Okay, whatever. Section 8 says, not what we were talking about necessarily, but also a fun one I've wanted to switch over for a while. Not even sure if it's MWSE, on the other hand. Let's see. What you got here? Board games. Oh, cool. Moropoly. I love that. <laughs> I need it. I hope Smalio sees that. Yeah, I must play Morrowind Checkers. Yeah. <laughs> You can't not do this now that you've shown this, Section 8. You know that, right? So you're on the hook for fishing. You're on the hook for this. Probably the broom thing, if I can find that, too. <laughs> you're on the hook, buddy. Mm, there's no requirements here. Usually, if something requires MWSE, especially Danae, is pretty good about saying it there. I think this is just... MW script, which I know Iggy implemented a bunch of games in MW script that, you know, would kind of blow your mind away for Starwind, Pizak, and stuff like that. Board games. Eh, let's, let's download it, huh? Look at that. Just MW script. Wow, I feel like we have to. I feel like we have to see this right now. I'm gonna make a mini games category. All right, uh, board games. Good find, section eight. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Let's comment all this crazy Zach business out. Pay no attention to that other stuff. Here we go. Moroopoly, you say. Well, hold up. I have no idea how to actually use the mod, though. I didn't even read anything. Ludo, checker, snakes and ladders, dice. Claggy's shop in Balmora. Okay. 
board game shop in Mulligmar. Cool. Moroopoli found in Mulligmar. Okay. And we'll be too colorful. Other boards. Tone down to better fit. All right. This makes me wonder if it's BCOM compatible. We'll find out. But otherwise, I don't see why not add this to, you know, any mod list. So, Molagmar Wasteworks, here we come. Okay. Oh, man. I can barely see my screen. Because the window is bright. I wouldn't normally do this, but I can't see a jack. So, here we go. Let's walk around like a fast mortal, shall we? Okay, um, where do, where do we add these? Doesn't say exactly. Pick up the pawn to place them on the board. <sighs> Neat. Oh, come on, man. You like Skooma. You know it. <sighs> Alrighty. No board game here. I must have picked the wrong place. You can have the Skooma, buddy. Ooh, there's doors over here, even. Pilgrim's Rest. That doesn't sound like a board game store. Board game... Shop. It's the place, I think. Oh, neat. You seeing this small? It's a jungle out there. Oh, man. Too cool. Oh, sure. That's colorful and doesn't fit. But come on. How can you? Yeah, this is awesome. How can you not love this? Sorry, I don't know. It's been a long time since I played that. She says from the other room. <laughs> cool. Wow, cool. Yeah, you can actually pick these up. Ooh, they're owned. I'll get in trouble if I touch that. Snakes and ladders. Okay. I see what you did there. Neat. Very neat. Very neat. This would warrant, if there isn't compatible with Beautiful Cities of Morrowind, this would warrant a patch, because it's just too neat. Alright. I don't know you. That's my purse. Give me that Morrowopoly. Oh. I'm going to play it on the floor right here. I'm sure they love it when people do that at the real store. Irreversible. Pick a place. Oh, maybe you can't actually play this one. I really wanted some Monopoly. We were going to play Monopoly right here on the stream, actually. Forget doing all the work. But I don't think it's happening. Yeah. Still cool. I still like it. Good find. Have to play around with that a little bit more. Definitely want to track that. And after all that, I didn't even crunch the website. Whoops. So, there you go, Section 8. Another thing you're on the hook for. 
working uh, Moroopoly, please. I don't think that's really doable yet, though. Because we can't... Um... I don't know. Maybe we could. You wouldn't need to pause the game, really. We just have the game world play out. Huh. That's a thought. Because you can control the camera. So we could get into, like, board mode, right? We can take input. So you could theoretically move the piece with, like, the arrow keys or whatever. Hmm. The idea man over here. You're on the hook for quite a few things now. Check back over here. Ooh, yeah. These are two good ones that I definitely want to look at uh, people reached out to me about. We'll do this one first. Barandis overhaul. Nothing to clean? Did I make a boo-boo? I think I did. I very well may have. I have a note to clean it. Maybe an old version needed cleaning. And, uh, and it was updated and I just forgot. We'll take a look. We'll look at my copy and see if it's cleaned. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, clean it again and see what see what happens. See what you know is allegedly dirty. Download the internet or any other as you prefer. Cool, I like it. Looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good to me. Um, you know, though, I have to go AFK for a moment. So, talk amongst yourselves. Topic, board game mods, go.
I return. Savage Banana Soup. Hello, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. We're just, uh, I was just taking an AFK break. And we're just uh, doing the usual thing, making some updates to the website. Section 8 here is working on some OpenMW Lua stuff. And we're just hanging out. I hope you're having a great day. Let's make sure we got all the changes for that one. Uh, simply walking update. All right. Awesome. Savage Banana Soup says, I am. I'm glad you are too. Cyanide and fiberglass. I have no rod and I must fish. <laughs> Welcome. And I'm glad you're here. Someday we will enjoy the fishing in Open MW Lua. As Merlord intended. Someday soon, hopefully. All right, let's just make sure I got all the changes. I think I do. Mention a specific thing to download. All right. Um, check that one off. Next up, Brandis Overhaul. Nothing to clean. Do I have an old version of the mod, maybe? Oh, okay. Uh, cyanide and fiberglass is Section 8. Had to switch to mobile. Name changed. Merlord's code is wild. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, he's a, a veritable wizard, to be sure. And also, I found, too, on a, on a slightly tangential note, it's sometimes not always best to directly, you know, uh, port MWSE patterns. Because there's vastly different ways of doing things sometimes with OpenMW Lua. So it's a tricky line to walk, for sure. Well, thanks for staying with us, by the way. Appreciate it, Section 8. A.K.A. Cyanide. All right, yeah, next up we're going to take a look at this one. And what I may need to do is reach out to the person who emailed me. And just ask them what version of is anonymous, is public false. So, yeah, I'm not going to share their information. But, uh, you know, um, what? there's different versions of TES3 command, and they make different assumptions about what's dirty. So maybe this is what we're seeing here. But we'll double check. Cyanide says, I gave up even reading the script after about 10 minutes. It's way too different. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That basically jives with my experience. You know, when I ported uh, Smart Ammo by Abbott, I actually didn't bother reading his code at all. I just kind of looked at the feature list on Nexus in the description, and I implemented those things. And I think that is the approach that we should take. And I think that... um. We should kind of like set expectations that, uh, you know, it's for OpenMW Lua, meaning there's going to be some differences and implementation is going to be tricky and be done iteratively. Iteratively. So, yeah. All right, Brandis Overhaul. Let's get in there, shall we? Oh, another, another terminal over here. Caverns, yeah. Okay, 2.1. Maybe I have an older version. And I somehow missed the memo on an update. That sometimes happens. I forget to track things. Nexus is, I don't know, for me, slow today. 2.1, latest version. I am tracking. I have downloaded, according to Nexus. I got it. Okay.
Must have cleaned it before I got this laptop because it's not in here. Let's just clean it again and see. Verandas overhaul. What is allegedly dirty? Duplicate object incense. One dupe. Hmm. Brandis Keep, top level. Well, you know we got to check it out now. Because in my personal experience, a duplicate sometimes is intended. The plugin that I made uh, as a patch for the Ghost Fence, Dynamic Distance, and Beautiful Cities of Morrowind actually contains two duplicates that are intended. And if you clean them, you will break the mod. Are we doing that here by cleaning Brandis Overhaul? I don't know. We gotta look. Mm, yeah, let's go. The suns came out a little bit more, which is good, but now I can't see my display. <laughs> you can see me, which is good. I cannot see my display at all. I got to turn this brightness up a little bit. I normally have the curtain drawn and work in absolute darkness. That's just how I like it. All right. Um. So what was the thing we were cleaning here? Let's scroll back up a little bit. Let's go ahead and put this in the just in my scratch pad here. Strong vault door zero zero. Huh. So it'll be a little tricky to figure out what exactly this is by flying around, but let's just take a quick attempt. Otherwise, we'll open up the CS and look. Uh, also, spoiler alert. I need more brightness. I don't want to close the curtain. I kind of want to. No. Well, again, I cleaned it, so maybe it's just gone. Um, so maybe it's an intentional dupe, and I broke something. I'm uh, legit worried about that at the moment. Because just in weird circumstances, dupes make sense. Oh, nice. This is uh, no, just a normal rant. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Well... We're going to open it up in the CS. Because I want to be sure. We should know. This should be knowable. Look for bags of money. It's a vault door. Okay. Savage Banana Soup says, good call out. I'm still just going to open up the CS though. Let's just do that. What are we cleaning for? Yeah, okay. Uh, good question. Going back to that. So somebody reached out to me via email. And they said that there was no cleaning of Brandis Overhaul, which I have noted there is here in my particular version of TES3 Command. But when we look at the output here, it's cleaning one duplicate door. Vault door. So I'm a little skeptical. Because in my own plugins, you know, there have been legit dupes. Um, Savage Banana Soup has a good call out that it might be, you know, some valuables or something. But we're just going to cut to the chase. And we're going to open up the CS and look at that cell and look at the object specifically and see. Because the CS would also let us know if it's an intended dupe. Because I would recognize the pattern that I see in my own mod, which is the ghost fence top is duped. Because it needs to be, be uh, for reasons that I don't understand, actually. <laughs> it's somewhere in Todd's brain. So anyway, let's go ahead and, uh, except for we want expanded vanilla here. Expanded vanilla. CS chugs a little bit, opening 
larger loadouts. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, Cyanide says, sure, Starwind does a lot of expected dupes cleaners hate. Yeah, yeah, you gotta really watch out for that. Um, I haven't encountered it too much, but then again, um, I've only recently started very, very closely examining it. So, we're gonna edit content file, and we're gonna ed directly edit Brandis, um, and see what it changes. Okay. So it could be that my version of TES3 command sees it as a dupe and it's and it's not really, you know. And and newer versions fix that. Brandis sewers, Brandis storage. Where were we at here? Brandis keep top level. Okay. Whoop. All right, well, we're not going to do any good looking at the cell directly. Let's look at the instance list. Apparently, some apt updates coming out of the pipe today. I goof there. Oh, big typo. Big, big typo. Comma. There we go. All right. Aha. This could very well be an expected duplicate because I see. Hold up. In strong vault door zero zero. There we go. Modified. So these are not the same things. It's not a duplicate. Uh, ooh, but no, but I'm looking at my clean plug in here. Ooh. Let me go ahead and just save this filter. And let's open up the non. I derped and I opened the clean. Yeah, the already cleaned one. We won't be able to very well see if it's a dupe, if the original one is not there. Okay, let's try that again. Apologies, folks. All right. Excuse me. All right. Brandis overhauled or not cleaned. Excuse me. And what was that filter again? Boom. There we go. All right. In strong object. Okay. This looks very much not like a dupe to me. So if we look at this out, put again, duplicate object instance. Different positions. Hmm. 
let's uh, let's take Savage Banana Soup's point and let's look for some valuables and stuff. Ninja monkeys, of course, we've got ninja monkeys here. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and call this not a dupe, though. Um, just simply because, I mean, look at it, you know. Let's edit them both. Clearly not the... Whoa, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't try this at home, folks. Yeah, this one and then this one. Not the same thing. Even different scales. Different ref IDs by one. I'm not sure why it thinks it's a dupe. Because it's not. I'm going to call this investigation done. And we're going to remove the recommendation to clean this. Because it's just simply not something you should do. Uh, and this is, I think, a pretty good look at um, cleaning in general. To remind us all that cleaning is not a magical process. It's not a one-size-fits-all silver bullet. It's not a, you know, every situation applies to every context. You know, we can see quite clearly here, once my Emacs is done, there you go, we can see quite clearly right here that it thinks, let me just stop the erroneous new line here, it thinks, you know, it needs to remove that, and that's a bug, that's a bug in TES3 command, because it's not even like my situation where it's legitimately a dupe but the dupe is legitimate to have there. This is just wrong. So what we can do here is we can just not recommend people to do the wrong thing. Clean. There we go. I didn't actually have the needs cleaning tag on there. So we don't need to change that. I wouldn't be surprised if I actually have an issue about this one on GitLab already. I'm not going to check it right now. So, okay, good call out. Thank you, person from the internet via email. The plugin is not dirty. It's just not. Not dirty at all. Total overhaul, expanded vanilla. Great mod, by the way, if you haven't gone into Barandas Overhaul. It's cool. I just love Seeloff's design sense. It's kind of what inspired me to make my own work, work on my own dungeon mod. I was seeing, you know, new Illinibi and stuff like that. Just awesome. And then seeing the OAAB content, you know. It's enough to make you want to just create a world of your own. Good takeaway from that one. And honestly, a fun look at uh, cleaning. Which I think uh, going forward, you know, 
going to be my official process for looking at cleaning. Uh, you know, in some cases, it obviously needs to be done. You got the obvious evil GSM, GMSTs, obvious symptoms of construction kit pollution. And then you have not so obvious situations like this one where Tool thought it was a dupe, but it's not. Um, indeed. Nothing to clean. Next up, we're going to look at this one, Improved Throne Weapon Projectiles. Uh, there's apparently some folder massaging that needs to be done that I don't mention. I have it on my local setup, so clearly I know about it. <laughs> patches from the main file. But apparently patches doesn't come ready to use. Section 8 says, GMSTs can sometimes be debatable even. One of my mods gets nuked by cleaners because of GMSTs that were intentional. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, if it looks like it's a, a dupe, which is pretty easy to do, you know. Um, yeah, so, you know, they're useful tools. It's useful to have, um, especially if you're using the vanilla CS and you want to keep dirty edits out of your stuff, dirty records out of your stuff, but uh, you got to be very careful and not just blindly accept it. Or just use good tools that don't pollute your work, like OpenMWCS, if you can. We'll get there someday, a world where you can seriously make a full mod with OpenMWCS and not have to worry about it not being good enough. And that dialogue thing, hopefully we can squash soon, because in my opinion, that's like, you know, a pretty big blocker. Uh, and I would, I would very personally, very much like it uh, to be fixed. Because I mean, I love CS.js, but uh, having a context shift out of the CS to do that, it's a little disruptive. Okay, so you know, I guess the thing to do here is let's look at what this looks like coming out of the zip file. I apparently have it set up right. Ah, uh, improved. Elsa and I were discussing the move up, down one this morning. Awesome. I'm glad you're driving forward with that. You're my hero, buddy. All right. You keep going with that. Be the hero that we need. All right. Uh, no, we're not going to look at my setup. We're going to look at what comes out of the zip here. Patches. Oh, yeah, indeed. Not usable, <laughs> this right here. So let's go ahead and fix that up, shall we? We shall. Armor. Weapons. What is wrong with me? Improved. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we want to tell people in the patches folder. What about, uh, Smalio says, what about a trap door in the dungeon that drops you to an even creepier place? That's a great design idea. And when we're doing the design, we can definitely go deeper into that idea. Or maybe I'll just talk to you about it later. I love that idea. And actually, I've seen in, uh, I want to say it was... Uh, the Mamea Revisited mod has like an interesting trap drop. You can fall into there and kind of get stuck. I was thinking about Labyrinth, the Tunnel of Hands. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, and patches. Okay. In the
just hanging out there in patches. All right, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Let's look. This is one of those ones I got to for sure look at. Also finding it hard to see my display. Erroneous 2. There we go. Get that out of there. I don't know Tunnel of Hands I haven't seen Labyrinth before and I'm a little afraid to look it up maybe we can talk about it later alright while well, we're waiting for this to crunch let's look back at the list and really type in here what we're doing We are cool. Did I bump? I did. I sure didn't. Don't go that way. Hey, welcome. Use a dragon shout. <sighs> welcome to the chat. I'm glad you're here. We're just fixing up stuff on the website, and yeah, just, uh, I guess, musing on dungeon ideas. What kind of traps are okay to throw at people? You know, you can get cheap, drop them in a hole, and hope that you have levitation magic, and if you don't, you're screwed. That would be kind of mean, though. Welcome to the chat, though. All right. Now, does this change I just made, does this look okay? Let's refresh the page. In the main file folder. In the patches folder, create a meshes folder. And within that, create a W folder. Place the NIF files from the patches folder into the W folder you just created. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. All right. Put the change log in there. Section 8 says, not even like a trap door, but you can check if they've crossed a certain point and position sell them somewhere else. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's like fun house levels of stuff there. <laughs> and and if done right, though, it could be pretty cool. You know, uh, it could be a cool effect for a dungeon if done right. Like maybe you have like some haunted Dwemer ruins, some ghost, uh, <laughs> you know. There's stuff you could do there. Don't go that way says, are you? Are you building into the game? Yeah. Uh, at this exact moment, no. But I am actually working on a mod. Um, building a, a dungeon in the mod. And I'm trying to think of like uh, clever things to do, right? Because you don't just want to make a place that's like, okay, go in there and get the thing and kill the bad guys, you know. Um, you want to try and make it a little more interesting than that. Solve a puzzle. Have something unexpected happen, like Section 8 said, teleport you somewhere. A ghost is maybe messing with you. Um, so, yeah, you know, not exactly right this moment designing, um, but I, in general, I'm working on a mod, and uh, 
thinking about what works design wise. It's a tough thing, you know, when you really think about it. It's real easy to just sit back and play a game and enjoy it. But when you're trying to make something that actually works, it's like, ugh. That's a brain grinder for sure. Explicitly mention. <clears throat> and maybe once I'm further along, I will show the dungeon I'm working on. I have two dungeons planned for a big quest mod that I'm making. Uh, and I wanted to get like a Legend of Zelda feeling in my dungeons, you know, I wanted there to be like puzzles, things to do, you know, go into the room and have to think about how do I open the wall or, you know, I was also thinking too, would it be too cheesemo to have like, if you've, I assume many of us here have played Legend of Zelda, when you solve a puzzle in Legend of Zelda, there's that little jingle. And I was thinking, would something like that be too cheesemo? If I like banged out like a very quick death metal riff or something, would that be too cheesemo? I don't know. I kind of want to try it. What's that small? Absolutely not, she says, but also I think it would be cheesemo, but it would be acceptable. I don't know. I might try it. I might try it out. Okay. <laughs> Sounds difficult. Cubase, I know Cubasic commands, but to make your own mods, outstanding. Hey, well, actually, um, if you're not familiar with making mods for Morrowind, it's actually, you know, it takes some knowledge. And, um, you know, let's just, we'll look at it right now once I'm finished doing this. It takes some knowledge, but it's actually not that much wizardry, you know? It's actually kind of simple um, to get going with. Dark Elf Guy has a series of videos on YouTube about how to use the CS. It's how I learned. And uh, and I hope to myself produce some video content to show people how to do it. But yeah, it is difficult to do it right. To have a good level that's fun to play is very difficult. Very, very, very difficult. I'm getting distracted here now. <sighs> Graphics overhaul. We take a quick look though at what it's like to create a mod because it's actually not it's not wizard we wizardry that much create something on the level of you know the greats it is a feat but to just do something you know to get started anybody could do it all right so yeah let's open that up so I'm going to be using a program that comes with open open MW called open MWCS And, uh, hmm, I don't know. We'll look at just, like, placing an NPC into the game and making him say something or something. I don't know. Let's edit a file. We'll edit one of my files. Then we'll edit the NWAS guide. This is a book I made. I put a book into the game to help people know what quests to do and stuff. Let's look at that. I put myself into the game, actually, as a Nord not actually my favorite race in the game either. I just had a beard. Kind of looked like me vaguely. So I picked it. So yeah. Open MWCS. This is basically what the creators of Morrowind used to make the game. Not this exact one. They used the Morrowind CS. But they effectively had a program that was like this. Where they could edit the game. Oh, there we go. And yeah, so this is like the designer's view of Morrowind. When they're creating the game, this is kind of like what they had to work with. And me or you or anybody else who's creating a mod will interact with it in this way. Uh, not everybody uses OpenMWCS yet. So they might have a different program they're using. But in general, what they're doing would be the same. And so when I put myself into the game... It's really, you know, uh, so this is me right here in the game. Hi, me. You can see I'm mousing over. It doesn't say the actual name, but that's me. And it it was literally as simple as this. Let's just go here to objects. So what you're looking at here on the right-hand side is just a list of things you can plop into the game. You can literally just drag and drop anything. 
And they're there in the game. Bloop, just like that. We're going crazy here. And uh, so let's... It really was that simple. Just <laughs> plopping myself in there. Looks exactly like me, says Savage Banana Suit. <laughs> He's got a little bit more hair on the top of his head, but yeah. <laughs> And I wanted to, uh, Gonzo actually, who's not here today, actually made a comment about the shoes and how ridiculous the clothing was. I've got like expensive clothing on this guy. Very out of place for a backwater village like Sedanin for sure. Um, I've contemplated toning it down a little, but I don't know. <laughs> you put yourself in the game, you gotta have fun. So anyway, I mean, that's not all there is to it, right? Like I have a, I have a, let's see here, I have a script on uh the player here if I can just find that field no it's not even on there huh here's the script give him the Colovian helm to section 8 says you know I absolutely thought about that because heck yeah I actually wanted to make OAAB data a dependency and put like the red one that looks like a Santa hat actually um, we may very well do that in a future update because I want to add a hello greeting to him where I just say outlander because right now he says the the Nord in the Nord voice he gives you the hello greeting and it's very I can do better but yeah anyway and this is the script this block right here handles the force greeting. This kind of keeps track of how many days it is. And after seven days, he pieces out and gets disabled. Um, and you don't see me in the game anymore. So, yeah, in a nutshell, you know, it's not really wizardry. You got to kind of know what you're doing and stuff. Um, but it's like, you know, a mere mortal can absolutely get into this and do cool stuff. So uh, I would encourage you to... If you're curious and feeling creative, Savage Banana Soup says, was thinking of Discworld-inspired mods tweaks. Ooh, yeah. That's a lore, I feel like, um, that could intersect pretty well. Add wizard to the Colovian helm. <laughs> I'm not actually really familiar with Discworld, so I don't get the reference, but I am passingly familiar. And yeah, I think like the, the intersection of lores could be kind of neat. So yeah, little diversion there. Uh, I hope that was an interesting look. Going back to the checklist here. Uh, oh yeah, we got the website has crunched. That's why we did that to begin with. Um, we wanna check the change log, make sure that that's up to date. Excuse me. Savage Banana Soup says, Oh my, I would invite you strongly to at least read the first book. I'll take that under advisement. Strong advisement. Um, always looking for some good sci-fi to read. Appreciate that. I wonder, Smalio, if you've read Discworld. She's my book club buddy. So maybe we'll do it for our book club. Yeah! <laughs> I just heard her in the other room. <laughs> Weapon... Projectiles updated to explicitly mention the need to create specific folders and move meshes into them. It's a little bit of a word soup there, but uh, I believe the needed information is correctly conveyed there. So I'm going to roll with it, and we'll have Gonzo review it when he gets back and uh, correct me as needed. Save the file, please. All right. Oh, man, I didn't even save my Brandis changes. I'm all over the place today. Wow. Okay. Going to just scoop these in together. And typing that out made me realize I need to put a manual tag on this. On what you say? On this one. Do I even have it here? 
Yeah, manual edit needed. Yep. Okay, improved. Tags. Yeah. Is an array. Whoop. If I can type. Tag. Manual edit needed. That is a worthy addition. Cool. Uh-oh, what did I do? Fat fingered again. Don't try this at home, folks. Uh, okay, that's checked off. Good, good. Mesh fix 1.2. Somebody emailed me about that. Let's see if they are requesting anonymity here. They are requesting anonymity, but they say the current link does not lead to the mod page. That's no good. Let's see what they're talking about here. Mesh fix. All right. Is this uh, archive.org? Oh no. Interesting. So this is uh, both, this is at once great news and also kind of bad news. <laughs> I mean, it's bad because my links that I went out of my way to try and fix are now broken once again. Good news though that, hey, all right, it's not going away. That's really, really great. And thank you, Fliggerty. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I deeply appreciate and respect everything you do for us. Unfortunately, there isn't much I can do at this point. Um, well, okay, hold up. Maybe I can find a usable copy of the page. And I can just hard code that. Yeah, here we go. All right. Mm, fixes. All right. <sighs> I'm going to assume probably a lot of these are broken because they're now grabbing the latest copy of what Archive has, which would have worked if the site was gone forever because the latest copy would have been just whatever they had, you know, but now it's the, the great message from Fliggerty. But I'm going to approach these on a one-off basis. I'm not going to try and scour. At this time, I'm not going to try and scour the list and find the broken ones. Uh, perhaps we'll do that next weekend on the stream. But for now, I'm just going to fix this one. Because, yeah, this is not exactly the funnest type of update work to do, really. Okay. That looks okay. Plantations. Thank you. Yes, Section 8. What, there was another one. Somebody reported plantations something. So there is... Uh, I actually was just working on that one. I think it's good to go. Um, but there was the concept art plantations ships with a BCOM ground cover plugin. And my page for that was borked. Had a bad download link pointing to the completely wrong mod, which is fixed now. Good call out. Thank you. Already fixed. So, okay. Yeah. Mesh fixed. Sure did have a broken link. Sure did, but I, I consider that a good, I consider this good news that House Fliggerty websites are not going away, that Fliggerty is dedicated to the community, it seems, uh, just a lot of respect for them, and and a lot of respect and thanks and, and gratitude. Big appreciate. 
So I think next. Oh yeah. Um this thing. Somebody emailed me. They have created a GUI for a TES3 command for Windows. I couldn't get it to run with wine. Because I'm using Linux. That's how I have to run Windowsy things. And I couldn't get it to run, but I didn't like put a lot of time into it. Um, but I'm really curious if this thing is useful for people. Um I shared it on Discord, but I don't think, you know, there weren't really many biters. Um, but I'm just curious for those of you using Windows out there. Um, and I'll pull up the link. But uh, I'm curious, you know, is this is this actually helpful? Is this useful? This thing right here. GitHub. DDM link. TES3 command cleaner. I looked at the code. Not a lot of code there. It's a very simple thing. Uh, but I looked at the code, and the code looks fine. It looks good. Uh, <laughs> Savage Banana Soup says, What is this Windows you speaketh of? Yes, yes. Indeed. Uh, actually, as it turns out, I should say... We just take a quick look here. That Windows users make up 73% of the traffic to my website. So, it's a big deal for a lot of people. And certainly, I think a lot of people that are wanting to play OpenMW probably haven't used command line stuff before. I think it's safe to say that. So something like this is really welcome for because you don't want them to skip cleaning. There's some things like um, lockpick. Uh, the pickpocket mod is just like riddled with dirty edits. Like totally something you want to clean. And if you're somebody who doesn't know about command lines, if you don't want to use TES3 command and you're like, I'm going to skip it, it's going to totally break your game. Those dirty edits will break your game. So, yeah, something like this is pretty welcome. But, yeah, I uh, uh, would encourage people check it out. Uh, Section 8 says, I looked at it, and it seems like it's only a front end for cleaning, which I guess might be all right. But I feel like it should go further to have a use case. Most people could just use MO2 as their front end if they really wanted it. And probably should considering MO2's suggested mod setups. Uh, and Savage Banana Soup says true to, uh, previously to the thing that I just said. So yeah, I mean, well, you could go either way, right? Um, Windows users not used to CLI. Yes. Um, so Section 8, you have a point. Um, maybe using it through MO2 is the way to go. That's not something I'm going to document or I know anything about. You know, so uh, maybe I might... I might ask you for help to to put some documentation there for people because I think something like this is good to have as a reference just for cleaning, you know, do one thing, do it well and all that. But uh, if there's like a pattern for using TES3 command with MO2 might be helpful um, to refer people if somebody made a tutorial or something like that, you know, refer people to that. I digress. I wanted to look at this and at least mention it. I can't run it at the moment. Seems promising, and I definitely appreciate the effort. Big thanks to the user out there, mystery person on the internet who did this. Section 8 says, I've been wanting to make a guide specifically for setting up TS3 command and MO2 for a while. Tried to walk a bunch of people through it by hand recently. Yeah, it's really a pain in the ass to do. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that'd be welcome, and I'd be happy to review it and give it a stab too, even though I don't really use MO2. Um, you know, I'd be happy to sort of dog food it to help you, and I'm sure many other people would. We probably have a small contingency of Linux using folks out there that are, you know, interested in the work that we do here. Okay, uh, yeah, so I mean, I looked at this. Not really much else to say. I'm going to put it on the list, though, for the sake of uh, keeping our checklist padded. All right, eight out of thirteen. I mean, I you know, if we look back at my June list, I kept it pretty short. I tried to keep it under ten things per day to keep the list reasonably, you know, finishable. I really want to solve this, but I ended the stream yesterday, kind of flummoxed by it. Not really sure. My my hacky code in the CFG generator was just outsmarting me, and I don't know if I really want to look at it right now. Um, but we did go through some of this stuff here. Um, this 
Project Atlas script, I will probably look at off stream. Um, but that's a really neat thing somebody did. Mm, let's look at the issues. Yeah. I'm actually more interested in some of these ones about cleaning. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Pickpocket rebalance is dirty. This is the one I was just talking about. We for sure want to, yeah, oof, look at all this. Very, 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 very dirty. Very dirty, and I don't say anything on the website. So we're going to go ahead and jump ahead. And add, let's add a note. This is one that you for sure want to clean because this is going to break your game. It'll break your game in a total overhaul setup. It'll break other things with its dirty changes. Needs cleaning. No, that's a lie. And I like to put the clean output in here for people who are curious, but collapse it with the details element. Yeah, quite a busy, quite a busy one here. Lots of dirty edits. That's just what happens when you, uh, this is wrong. When you use the vanilla CS. It's just what happens. All right. this change log
my editor is lagging today big time. It's kind of irritating. Okay. All complaining aside. Lag because of storms? No. <laughs> Smalia says, lag because storms? No. It is not storming at the moment, I don't think, either. Just throwing it out there. Well, I appreciate that. No, if I look at, it's just, I think, mostly because OBS, you know, OBS is chewing up my processor to, uh, to show you this, basically. Um, yeah. My laptop has the integrated GPU, so I don't really have, like, a good, you know, encoding that doesn't kill my processor, you know. It just happens. Uh, all right, well, we're coming down to the home stretch, and I think I am going to end up looking at this, and then we'll put a website deploy in there to round it out for today. Uh, I'd like to also kick out a patch for RR Better Ships and Tomb of the Snow Prince. As I mentioned yesterday, get rid of some dupe ships. And that'll go into the 6.x series of updates for the site, though, so it's not a huge priority. Also working on a Lua implementation of installing Dwemer lightning rods. Stay tuned on that one. That one's less straightforward than I thought it would be. But got some good help from Zach on that one. Zach has a cat being the resident OpenMW Lua wizard these days. I'm very grateful for his help. Knows a lot more than I do. It's dirty and requires cleaning. Plugin is dirty. Very, 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 very dirty. Very dirty. 61. Oof. Total 72 evil GMSTs. Yikes. <clears throat> All right. That's a good change. Excuse me. What can I say? All right. I haven't run the tests basically all day, so... Just put that out there as a sanity check before I jump into CFG generator land. Round out the day with that. And I think in the next week you can expect uh, a couple more bug fix changes for the website 5.x series. Just fixing janky things or things that have updated. But then we're going to start really dumping in the new stuff. And I can see total overhaul pushing past the 500 mods mark. Pretty easily. Pretty easily, indeed. Uh, we could also end the stream looking at something cool rather than hacking on code that I hate. Um, we could do Marland Interior. No. If you guys haven't seen this one, it is super cool. Nexus Mods is having a day today. I'm telling you, they've been slow all day. At least from my region of the world. I don't know where they're... Yeah, this one. So basically, 
they use some design tricks. I don't know if you can kind of really see what's going on here, but we're inside a building seeing outside, seeing the trees outside. We're going to go there right now and look at it. Yeah, Savage Banana Soup. Oh, indeed. If you haven't seen this, you're going to love it. I'm telling you. It's a really clever uh, design. And we can look at exactly how it works, too. Okay, run, run me game. All right. Just to show you what I mean. Um, now, the, the way that this game, this mod is implemented means it'll be a little spicy compatibility-wise. Uh, for example, with Beautiful Cities of Morrowind, you're not just going to plop this into a setup with Beautiful Cities of Morrowind and everything's going to be okay. They're going to develop, a, the mod author is going to develop a specific compatibility version for Beautiful Cities of Morrowind. So for now, we can't enjoy it together with that. Remember, uh, Banana Soup says, Savage Banana Soup says, remember Skyrim's mod Open Cities? Maybe Open MW, Open Open MW at some point. Yes, I do. And Oblivion also had Open Cities mod, and I used them both. And they're fantastic. And they really add to the immersion you know, um, and so before I go inside and show, sort of show you the sauce on this mod, what would be really cool is to like have a seamless transition between exterior interior cells, right? Like so I can open the door and I can see into the interior cell, but it's like seamless. That's really like the end game for me, I think. Um, something like that would just be really incredible. Morrowind doesn't really have like the interior cell cities thing going on, but you do see it in like Fallout 3 and stuff too. TES 4 based games. But anyways, so here we are. And yeah, look at that. I mean, you can see outside. It's pretty cool. Now, if we just cheat a little bit yeah whoa indeed we just cheat a little bit and we can kind of see how this is implemented and this is by the way an open m open mw only mod and i'll explain why in a minute but basically what they have done is this is an interior cell this is the interior cell for pelagia at halfway Ta tavern but they have basically copy pasted a chunk a couple cells worth say maybe nine up to nine cells worth it's hard to, for me to eyeball it but certainly like a grid of cells here pasted it indoors and so yeah it like really looks when you're inside it really looks like you're looking outside because they brought the outside in and that's really how it works and so yeah here we are look at this too cool just too cool okay let's look at another place And this is a part of my iHeart Vanilla setup locally, and we'll be finding its way onto those lists, along with AF Fresh, Hello Fargoth, and a bunch of other really cool mods that I think are essential vanilla things to have nowadays. Those new Doug Goodall mods. Gotta have them. If you haven't tried AF Fresh or Hello Fargoth, what are you doing with your life? Get out there now and get them. <laughs> uh, okay. Here we are in Caldera. Same deal, right? You can see outside now. I mean, this is just, if you're not using Beautiful Cities of Morrowind and you're not using this mod, you're doing it wrong. You're just simply doing it wrong. Um, so yeah, again, let's bring the mod page up on the screen here. Morrowind Interiors Project by Grumbling Vomit. Savage Banana Soup says, oh, so interiors will be bigger, although static and that shouldn't matter because it's still only tiny. Are you referring to the fact that some exteriors, uh, some interiors on the outside are smaller than their actual area on the inside? Because, uh, yeah, that's an issue for sure uh, for re-implementing them in kind of an open cities kind of a way. If that's what you're talking about, let me know if I follow you. Yeah, get this mod. I'm about to endorse it right now. Or not. 
Nexus mods. <sighs> okay. I endorse this mod fully, even if Nexus won't let me do it. There we go. I have already endorsed it. Error. Error. Okay. Well. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. So good stuff. Good stuff. It's going on iHeart Vanilla. If you use that setup, go ahead and jump the gun and grab this. Um, I haven't really settled on where it goes exactly, but, you know, on here I just chucked it at the bottom. Uh, yeah. So that's this one. Really fun idea. Cool implementation. It just seems like a lot of work compatibility wise. But oh, and I didn't go into why is it why is it OpenMW exclusive? Because OpenMW uh, has wa interior water level controls that are not present in the vanilla engine. Maybe they could be. I don't know. So that would be the reason for that, though, um, being OpenMW exclusive and using features of the CS. So. All right, well, I mean, hmm, here we are now. Huh? <laughs> Let's take another look at the issues backlog. Savage Banana Soup says, no, I mean, the copied exterior cells add memory to the interiors they are copied into, so those exteriors are like a Hollywood set. I don't know. When set, i.e. static, and an interior... An exterior copied onto an interior is okay mem-wise because the interior mem is small to begin with. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Interiors typically have less going on. So this works to copy-paste some of the stuff from the exterior and, and sort of build it up. Also consider that there's no, no NPCs. Um, which do take up CPU time, the NPCs walking around, colliding with things. Um, so there's none of that. Um, so they do avoid uh, some of the pitfalls of that, for sure. But that's definitely good to note. Um, you don't want to just like willy-nilly add a bunch of junk into your interior and make it all slow, but uh, they've done it tastefully here, and it seems to work. Section 8 says, I learned yesterday MWSE has the capability to write memory directly. So sure, why not? The world is your oyster. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, actually, Section 8 we're, and I were talking privately. I guess 4NM does this, the combat overhaul mod that's somewhat well-known. They do some pretty wild stuff to get the job done. Um, interesting. Dubdilla location fix is dirty. So this is a mod by Half Eleven, who is a modder who is the owner of Patch for Purists. They may know more about Morrowind than most people, almost certainly. So when I see there's a duplicate object instance here, I wonder, is this yet another case of like the OK duplicate? Is this yet another OK dupe here? Thank you, Nico. Niccolo Belly, uh, very helpfully letting us know what version of TES3 command they got. Which one do I got? Oh, yeah, it's, like, hard to... 37W. Okay, so different than theirs, I guess. <sighs> anyway, we're not going to dive too into the weeds right now, but this is another one where, you know, before we go ahead and mark this dirty, we're going to have to go ahead and look in the CS. What is this dead skeleton record, you know, for F, I don't, at the top of my head, maybe you know Section 8, what is a FR, MR record? I don't know. There's a working version of .40 in the pull request section of the GitHub page, by the way. Oh, for TS3 command? Yeah, okay, I know I've seen .4 out there floating around. So then I guess the next question I have is, yeah, like, what's the relevant changes, you know, because I know it does have some Cell instance for FRMR record. Cool. Like an object. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Thank you, Section 8. I appreciate that. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to leave it here for today. But eventually, we're going to have to go through here. And, uh, you know, Niccolo was very kind to identify a lot of things. This one definitely should not be cleaned. Absolutely should not be cleaned. Um, I'm sure I already mentioned that to him. But a lot of these, you know, we got to look at these one by one and see, like, you know, look, all these need cleaning, he says. Um, we got to look at these and see, like, are they legit dupes or are they errors, unintended? 
So yeah, let's go back to the checklist before we say goodbye for today. All right, well, we did quite a bit. I'm going to still be diving deep into this fix for the area of effect arrows, try to untangle the the hackage, uh, you know, for that and, and get the correct information out to people. I want to leave it at one last thing, though. Um, this mod right here is up on Nexus Mod, MBSP, uncapped for OpenMW Lua. Designed, I haven't looked exactly into why, for my NCGD Lua edition. But I encourage you all to go check it out. Um, a Lua implementation of the Magicka Base skill progression concept, which if you didn't know, scales the XP you get for casting a spell based on how much it costs. Makes casting magic a lot more fun. Um, definitely go look at it. Find it on the Nexus. I've, it's a, I've replaced old MBSP with it. And I encourage you to do so and give me some feedback. Let's help this. Uh, let's help Phoenix Warrior Seven, you know, make this the Magic of Base skill progression mod. It also uncaps all skills, which I feel like should be a separate mod. And I want to suggest that to them. But in in any case, they did a really really cool creative approach here. Lifted a lot of ideas from my mod for better or for worse. Uh, so yeah, I want to leave it at this. Check it out. Happy modding. Happy playing. And I will see you next weekend. Cheers.